are. Hi, everybody. Hi. Happy Wednesday, Emily. Well, happy Wednesday, Kate. Thank you. Happy We're back Wednesday, in the saddle. Everybody. Yes, if it's Wednesday, it must be Facebook Live here at beadshop.com. It's real nice to here be back. Here we are. It's Truly. great to have you back. You know. I'm glad you had a good little break. Productive though. break, for That's sure. Great. For sure. Um, I'm going to see. jump on, make sure we can see the video. Well, it's Kate Richburg and Emily Miller in front of the camera. We've got mm -hmm. Brandowin behind the camera. We've got Janice uh, commenting on the other side of the computer. Oh my and of course, we've got Drea Antia. too. Um, I don't think we, I don't know. You never know mm -hmm. when Drea is going to pop in. And then Antita we've got our over the water. Oh, yep, yeah, from far away, Denmark doing but near some in our working. Hearts. And. Gita, you will see Gita log on as beadshop.com. So we've got our whole team ready and Rating. excited to jump in, which is great. Um, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. You so, know, yeah, I'm so glad that we Talk picked this me. as. The, I'm so glad we picked this as the coming back project. Yes, because it's it's kind of a love, and it's it's one of those ones that I've taken to the like nth degree kind yes. of ones it, it, that I've it, thought it out yeah. not thought it out but I've done it out in so many ways and it's yeah. it is really fun you can apply it a bunch of different ways yeah. so and it's a classic kind mm -hmm. of a classic seed bead technique we're it gonna, is we're absolutely talk about that in just a few minutes but we've also got um you know Janice when Janice was here mm -hmm. you know we were doing a lot of planning and cool stuff so I wanted to let you guys know Coming down the pike this summer, starting like, I don't know, in a couple Next weeks. Week. Yeah. We've got all kinds of really great stuff planned for Facebook Live. We've got more wire. It's been obvious that you guys have loved the wire, and we love that you love the wire. Really? Um, Emily has an old wire classic that you're going to share, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to do next week. It's a little bit of a Kate Richburg classic for next week. Um, we also um, have some brand new beads that are coming down the pike. Emily and Janice and I are actually going to be working this afternoon. Oh, I can't wait. With some of our new stuff, so we've got new things. Because there's not much, almost nothing better than new beads. I know, right? Almost nothing. Almost nothing. Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you guys, uh, you know, always reach out. It's great that you guys email and reach out with ideas or, hey, Kate, I want to see this or that or whatever. Don't hesitate to shoot us an email because I love to hear your ideas. Um, we also have, um, what was I going to say? It left my brain completely, but it'll come back. It'll come back to my brain. I'm just excited to have you back, so I can't remember anything. But um, I know I know why you're excited to have me back. What, so I don't have to demo the whole time? <laughs> yes! That's right. Because no. a couple of times I caught you, you know, I didn't, I wasn't there for every show or all the whole shows, but mm -hmm. I would kind of drop in and see you working away, and I was like, oh. Oh, that's the part when she Kate needs to take help. a break. That's right. <laughs> but we had some great special guests. We had Tammy Drennan, mm -hmm. we had Sarah Oler from Softlex, mm -hmm. Janice was back, so it was great to see Tammy looked like she was having a really yeah, good time, Yeah, she too. was having a really good time. A little starstruck, time. you know. Yeah. But no, well, she did a great no, job. No, no, she did wonderful. Yeah, she wonderful. did a great job. And it was great to have everybody um, everybody there. So we are going to um, jump in today. Oh, and this is what I wanted to mention. Okay. So for our bead shop broadcasts, you guys, you can watch them three ways. We've got a lot of learning around this. And I know a lot of you, we get, I want to say, newer and newer people every week, right? Um, more and more people every week. And so there's a couple of ways that you can watch this broadcast after the fact. Of course, you can watch it live every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time right here on our Facebook page. You can also then, after the broadcast, if you can't catch us live, you can watch us on our YouTube channel. You can catch us on our website, beadshop.com, and there as you go right to the Facebook Live section of our website, and it's there. And then you can also, of course, it's archived right here on our Facebook channel as well. We super appreciate all of your shares and likes and hearts and thumbs up. We love that because the more we get shares and likes and thumbs up, the more people see our content. And we work really hard to get some great beating content out for you guys. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I realized while I was on vacation, well, sort of vacation, <laughs> that... Your working vacation. My working vacation. I really missed the contact. And I, I, when I explain what we do here on Wednesdays, sometimes people who aren't in the know or aren't beaters, and I say, oh, yeah, I go on this live broadcast every Wednesday, and a bunch of people watch from all around the world, and 
this is kind of my contact again, you know? Yeah. I, I really miss hanging out with people who bead, and I have some other knitter friends, and I have some a few beater friends, and everybody's busy, and they're doing things, and their kids are in school, and they've got, you know, other things going on, and it's hard to get together. It is. And this is, this is and the dedicated time, time right? every week, you know, that we can always sit down and have that interaction and have that back and forth. And it's so funny that when people say, well, you teach these classes online. How do people get asked questions? I say, well, they just type them in. They type to them the in. comments. That's right. <laughs> and then we answer them live. They're like, oh, you know, we don't have to listen to you guys try and get in like a word in edgewise or anything. We do our best to follow along on the comments. And if there's questions, we try and answer them right there, live, yeah, right there, live. immediately. That's right. Yeah. No, no waiting around. But I appreciate right. it when things are getting really kind of busy or I'm at a demo spot. And you hang on just for a second. I'll get mm -hmm. to it. So and don't worry. I'll do my best. That's right. And we've got a couple of comments about our social media. We, um, uh, we had a question from Bettany. Does Bead Shop have an Instagram page? We do. And Brandwin is the <gasps> curator of that Instagram page. So Brandwin does a great job. We have a great mm -hmm. Insta page that Brandon is the curator of. And we also have a great Pinterest board. If you go to beadshop.com, we have so many things pinned on our Pinterest. Um, Emily does a lot of work on mm -hmm. that Pinterest board. So we really try and reach out to you guys as much as we can. Yeah. Um, also, when you're watching the broadcast, if you watch it a little bit after the fact, and you're not totally into our chit chat that happens at the beginning, um, which I can't imagine why. No, why just kidding. would no one like totally, to listen to us? Totally, I totally get it. Nothing. You're like, get yeah. to the broad, get Moving to the on. get to the project, ladies. Land the plane. Yep, land that plane. <laughs> so uh, we land the plane at about 15 minutes in the broadcast. So depending you can on the always, weather. Depending on the weather, right? We have to circle around once, like now. Um, I see. I'm landing. I'm coming in. Stop. Coming in. It's a, you missed me. I did. You I missed did. Me. I did. Of course, I missed you. You could get. Uh, you can go for it about fifteen minutes in the broadcast, and it's because I'm funny. Making my face all red. And the uh, then the learning starts at about fifteen minutes in. You can also every Monday after uh, the broadcast goes live. So we're on Wednesday. On Monday, um, we publish our episode no notes about noon Pacific time, and those episode notes are like the cliff notes of. Your well, they're broadcast. the other part of the class. Yeah, it's you the know. handout, yeah. really. You really, mm -hmm. if you take a yeah. class and there's no handout, I worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's some kind of handout, whether it's emailed to you later or you can look at it on your live on your iPad mm -hmm. or there's one that the, that the instructor's kind of referencing. But you've got to have some kind of written kind of, stuff kind to of reference, reference back to, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and Drea and Janice have done such a such a great job. We're, we're so spoiled with those. by having yeah. not to do that. And Brandwin takes those photos, a lot of the photos live during mm -hmm. the broadcast. Mm -hmm. So it really does show um, some great um, some great techniques and stuff as well. Thank you today, for all the welcomes back. Yes. Appreciate it. Well, today what we're going to do is we've been trying, we've been experimenting with different um, camera angles and mm -hmm. stuff. I think today um, M. We're going to move, um, since this is kind of a um, a pretty easy thing to see, yep. they don't have to have your perspective, True. we're going to move the camera down, and then if you guys are having issues, we'll move it again. Okay. But we're still yeah. experimenting with some of our camera angles to get you guys the best viewing experience possible, so kind of bear with us yeah, um, with that. So, uh, I guess that's it. Um, you have some... Let's talk a little bit about the sample, and then you have some big samples that we're going to show. I have some. And then we'll talk about showstoppers. We'll talk about the technique. Yeah. So today's project is a spiky fringy bracelet. Yes. Sometimes it's called a caterpillar. Um, it's got lots of names. I kind of settle on textured fringe because it's kind of a textured fringe. It was a textured yeah. fringe. Um, to me, always seed beading um, has as long as I have been doing it. Fringe is always kind of the icing on the cake. It's the mm -hmm. last part that you do for any particular project. Little but little, it is because it looks great against your black. It is kind of the fun part. Mm -hmm. And you know, this oh. is um, if we're talking about calories, this has no nutritional value. This is just fringe. <laughs> just fringe. So, you know, it in a in a learning sense it doesn't have a lot of other cross applications. Mm -hmm. But it does get you used to making fringe and what that what what it takes to make that fringe. I also like to show a little bit of my techniques for mixing beads. I'm excited about mixing. And you know, mixing beads, seed beads especially, is 
Sometimes it can be it a can little, little nerve-wracking for people. We do right? it here at the beach shop all the time. And, you know, we all gather around a, a shoebox full yeah. of loose beads and we go, And we hmm, do our mixes, yeah. Hmm, I think it needs something else. Yeah. And so we kind of make a we make some judgments there. But we do it as a group. And if you're at home doing it alone, it can be a little scary. Yeah, and also I think that um, if you're a beater who likes to lay your beads out, use a bead board or those types of things. Like last week on Facebook Live when I did kind of that leather and big old beads and right. stuff. You saw me string that, you guys, right off the cuff. I did not pre-plan. It's going to kind of be the same thing here today. And, you know, I want you guys to remember, they're only beads. It's true. Right? But I can actually show you a way to plan where it looks really random. Oh, even better. Yeah. For those Which of you who are like, I got For those of you who get freaked plan. out by yeah. not being able to yeah. lay things out, I, don't I like can to show plan. you. I don't either, but I also noticed that it's really yeah. easy to pick up a rhythm. Yeah. Even if you didn't really mean to do it. Right. And so to kind of watch what you're doing, to be in the moment, mm -hmm. um, but also to play with this and have fun with it yeah. and, and play with lots of different things. So this is the bracelet that today's project is, is sort of focused on. Toggle clasp, I think, is very functional and useful for this yeah. style of bracelet, but you could use a lobster or whatever. My general rule of thumb with clasps in all cases is, first, it's got to be functional. You've got to be able to put it on and take it off. And second, it should be in scale, in balance with what with you've made. With the piece, yeah. So um, a really heavy, big bracelet with a tiny little clasp just looks, looks a little out of looks proportion. Looks a little out of proportion, yeah. yeah. And that's just really all we're talking about is yeah. proportion, you know, as long as that functionality is there first. And speaking of proportion, <laughs> you've got some samples. You want to see let's the big take guys? A look. Yeah, let's take a look at those real quick. And then we're going to jump the camera down and, and, and start to do the technique. But these are pieces, Emily, that you've made over the years. Mm -hmm. um, it's the exact same technique, mm -hmm. only on a grander scale. Yeah. So talk a little bit about, about how you started this technique. You know, um, I actually have the first piece that I ever made. Oh, ever, and ever, or ever with this technique? With this technique, ever. Um, I was really inspired by this Mother of Pearl mm -hmm. centerpiece. And... I wanted something that would balance it, mm -hmm. you know, size-wise, so it looked appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always loved whites and silvers and mm -hmm. pearlescent kind of colors. Right, kind of tone on tone. And I made this little great little bracelet, and I thought, God, this is really fun. I really like it. Yeah. And there's a bunch of things I can do with it. I can incorporate some seashells and some ceramic beads and a bunch of things that were random bits and pieces. And then as I kind of got going along, I started finding really big beads. Other things. Yeah, and so Italian uh, Venetian glass beads. Look at these guys. These are like monstrous so those big Venetian beads. glass, those um, blown, those yeah. hollow glass yeah. beads. So beautiful. And I, what, would I, what was I going to use that for? It's right. too big for a bracelet. And it's great you know? as a finial on this But piece. it works really nicely yeah. here. And I added some bead tip, some bead, bead caps, caps yeah. and a little bit of um, sort of yeah. loopy fringe here at the bottom. And it feels, you guys, this feels so, I'm going to put this one on. It's so, very luxurious. Doesn't it? I just want to kind of do this. You can absolutely do that if you like. Do that, you know. Like. And I've so far I've made wind. three of these. I wow. have a I have a fourth one on the on the work table that's a bit slow. They're great. But these take considerably more time and yep. effort and, and beads than than uh, what we're gonna do today. Yeah. But so this is a great jumping off. Point. Yeah, absolutely. And so you did some over there. Mm. You have another bracelet that's really kind fun of a tutti fruity colors. Right. So and all those the Christmas beads. African striped mm -hmm. Christmas beads, um, and lots of different sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can really use a whole bunch of stuff from your bead stash. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so really, what we're looking at for a bracelet is about about a hundred fringes mm -hmm. that we're going to make. Okay. Right. And each fringe is going to have something at the end. So okay. I call that a shape bead. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, on these, you can see this has a little flower, and this mm -hmm. one has a little tr sort of pie shape. Right, a little fan. Um, a little, here's a little kind of rectangle, mm -hmm. square guy. Um, so there's so that's your that shape, shape bead. bead. Mm -hmm. right? Well, let's go ahead, and Brandon, let's move the camera down, and let's take a look at, um, at the beads we're using in our specific projects. And you can talk a little bit about the ratio sure. of shape beads and stuff. And mm -hmm. we'll have pictures of all of these great, um, Emily's great projects um, in the episode notes as well. But, oh, this is such a great... It's an old Green Girl class. Little, yeah, old class from Green Girl. And, and those are those um, nail heads Those something. are actually hollow, um, Gosh. blown glass, blown like glass. Christmas tree ornaments. Almost. Super same, vintage. Same technique, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, when I look at it, I kind of... I realized that my taste at the time 
was what it was. Mm -hmm. And I would, if I was going to redo this in more modern things, I think I would um, make the size of the beads a little finer, mm -hmm. a little smaller, mm -hmm. um, and, and have a little bit more contrast in my shapes. Mm -hmm. I also have really discovered over, over the years of doing a fair amount of these that once you get up into about a size 8 millimeter mm -hmm. bead, it's a pretty big bead in this process. Right. And usually what I recommend is just to stay around 6 millimeter okay. or below. Or below. Okay. okay. Just so, as a reference point. So let's take a look at, you were talking, we've got two colorways here, mm -hmm. right? Yes. One is called Briar Patch, is this, this one. Mm -hmm. And the other one is called Shekere. Right. Right? And... Um, you know what a Shekere is? I do. So it's a gourd instrument that yeah. has a net of beads. And when and you, you shake it, it kind of makes, makes that a noise. shaky, shaky, that noise. shaky noise. Yeah. I love it. So I'm going to be working with that um, shikare colorway today, um, but why don't why don't you show the ladies and gentlemen? Why don't we talk a little bit about um, the shape beads and let's okay. jump into our mix? Yeah, and absolutely. I'll start mixing with you. Absolutely. So you know what? I have my um, my bead pile here that I worked with for um, my bracelet, and I'm just going to move it over here for you, Brandon, a little bit so it's a little more in the center. Mm-hmm. So this was my mix of all the shaped beads that I chose. And in this case, what I did was I took some melons, uh, some 5mm bicones, some 3mm and 4mm mm -hmm. fire polish, and of course some small shadows. And this and whole list, we've done a couple of things. I don't mean mm -hmm. to sure, interrupt your cheek or your flow, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you block your, block your, I don't know, your flow, whatever it is. Um, but we do have both of these recipes are on beadshop.com, yep. right? Yep. And are both of these um, ingredients lists. We also have, uh, I think we have a recipe. I want to make sure before I speak. But I believe we also have that recipe on there. Because any, like we were saying before, any bead. Any bead will work in this. Six millimeter if under, you figure, right? If you figure that you want to have about a hundred beads or so at your disposal mm -hmm. to work with, mm -hmm. then that shape bead thing kind of, yep. and you can sort the, that the out. recipe as well. Yeah, you can kind of sort that mm -hmm. out in a, in a sort of simple way. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things I do um, as I'm finishing up a particular bracelet is that I will, I will make a small sampler of the beads that I used. Mm -hmm. And this is just from the leftovers. And it lets me know what I use if I want to repeat it. Oh, that's really smart. Right? So, and so it's just a little yeah, kind of guide. A little sampler. Yeah. It's like a little little mm -hmm. um, record. Record of what you right? use. And it doesn't take up any room, and I can always take it apart if I want it. So I've got, this looks like, these are yours. I'm stealing yours. Yes, you are. I am. So I, I am brought indeed. you some little mixing jars. Yeah, so let's mix. So it, I would start uh, mixing my shape beads first. So in the shape beads for the shaker a um, mm -hmm. colorway, plus we added these guys. These guys here. So we're using an eight, an eight aught also as a shape. Yeah, and, and a, a six. six, and those temples. And the copper temples. Right. And then we've got two of the different um, rondelles. Right. These are the five millimeter here. rondelles. Mm -hmm. The mustard. And the uh, jet casso, mm -hmm. I think. Right. Yep. And then uh, we also have a mix of three and four millimeter um, millimeter check fire polish. So I've got uh, matte iris brown. I've got the jet bronze Picasso that we all know is our favorite. Uh, matte metallic copper, also a fave. And then this white tortoise celsian. I love the white tortoise celsian stuff. I do too. The, all the celsians kind of make me yeah, happy. Yeah, we have that celsian also in the milky amethyst celsian, I right. think, too. Which right. Did we use I that? I think so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's, it's so, really cool. so good. So what do I do? I just cut, cut yeah, and pour? cut and pour. All right. So we're going to, I usually Let's mix in something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to mix in this little sake cup. With all these shapes, I would cut and pour the whole strand. Okay. Um, with the temples, I might take um, half of it or okay. so. And so throw you those guys in. Can see. I don't know if you guys can. Let me. Brandwin, can you see inside if I tilt it? Uh, not really. No. Well, Maybe you know, when we get more in. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. There we go. You have to tilt. I it have to really far. tilt. All right. Oh. I'm not afraid. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this whole thing. Yeah. 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 Why absolutely. Not? And clip. with these beads, they're big enough that if you really had to un unmix them, you could yeah. without you know too much trouble. I never unmix and mix. I don't either. But sometimes people get bored and they need something to do. It's a, yeah. it's a great quiet rainy day activity. Right. Sorting beads. Very satisfying. Let me just cut these here. Free the beads, ladies. And so gentlemen. any small dish like this that you can has some good walls on it mm -hmm. is a great mixing dish. 
I think a light color or a metallic if you had a little metal triangle. Can I uh, can I have your triangle? Sure. I know you've got stuff in it. No. Nope. I'm going to steal it. There you me. go. So there's um, my triangle. That's kind of a nice thing to kind of mix with, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I bet I have a triangle in here. It's okay. You can keep it. It's All fine. Right. Okay. It's yours now. Okay, I will. Let me go ahead and cut these into that triangle. So we're going to do the same thing with the 11s um, to get our mix oh, for our fringe. So we make two And you we guys, seriously, mixes. I've never seen Emily make one of these. You know how I don't like to practice beforehand. And let's two just of those. put a little soupçon, soupçon of that. that of the, uh, and the uh, sixes and eights. These are the galvanized pewter and the dyed gray alabaster. Alabaster. Mm -hmm. So let's just pour that mix out so yeah. we can look at this. If there was a Kate Richburg mix. It is a really pretty one, it? Isn't really it? is good. Right? Delicious. So you're going to use this as your mix, right? Right. And, and these are going to be your shapes that you're going to pick up from. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you might have a little extra, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So one way to make this very random, even though it's frustrating to have to think about random, mm -hmm. is to actually just make a line of beads. Mm -hmm. So you can take your uh, make it triangle. And you guys, there make people, a little row. people have been asking about the bracelet samples and all of your other different samples. We're going to show those, you guys, at the end of the broadcast. We promise, promise, promise. So if, so you, make this a, if you make a little stream of beads, and then just start at one end, and that's what you're going to pick up. Okay. And if that's the hardest thing you can do to yourself, oh, then that makes okay. it random. And you can always say, oh, you know what, there's two together, I'm going to mix something else So in there. then this is my little line mm -hmm. of shapes. That's how you're going to pick them up. And I just go along the line. And you don't have to think. It's a great idea. Right? Yeah. And you can do that with the 11s as well. Terribly clever. Well, let's mix the 11s. Okay. I'm going to put these back no, in the No, just shove them over here. Can't, okay. No, don't leave them. Don't no. put them away. They're All too right. pretty. All right. Just I, shove I them shan't. over there. Shove All them right. That way. So then now, we'll mix in this bowl. Yeah. With mixing 11s, I would mix about a quarter um, to a third to a half depending on how big your bracelet's going to be, of each tube. So if this is the matte opaque chocolate. chocolate. If you do too much, you're going to end up with a kind of a big mix of things right. that you may not want to use for anything else. There's the canary right? yellow. Mm -hmm. Let's do the brown tan, Pica Picasso brown tan. And is that everything? That's the, So in this one, we chose just three colors. Uh -huh. I was kind of looking for some gourd colors. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing you can do, and put this out... Put a pour out like this a little bit. Yeah. So you can decide that this is the mix, or you can say, you know what, it needs something else. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a little bit dark, and I would like so some more. I want to lighten this up maybe a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Let's put a little more of that in. Mm -hmm. I know, very scientific, isn't it? There we go. Look at that. That looks great. And that definitely lightened things up. So it's really the ratio of what you do to the. Um, how you mix those beads. So you, I can see yours, Emily, the one that you have here, yeah. those 11s. You have uh, a few more 11 knots in that mix. Is that right? I do. I have a, I have five in this one, uh -huh. which is kind of a big number for me. I don't usually quite use quite that many colors. Um, but here, again, that briar patch idea was that this was berry, kind of a berry bush. Right. Um, I am intimately friendly with berry bushes because we have some... Um, volunteer berry bushes in our yard That's that, right. as volunteers are super stubborn. Yes. But they're on their way out. Yes. We're thanking them for their service and That's moving right. them out. Moving them out. <laughs> Thanks so much, berries. Yeah. Goats. I need my goats right, back. Right. Right. So these, so yeah, it, I think it depends on, like we've got a lot of kind of muted colors here. Mm -hmm. So I think these three colors look really yeah, great yeah. together. I mean, if we wanted to pop this up a little bit, you know, we might add a copper. Yeah, to sure. It, some kind of color. We could use a copper. Or you know? I really like this kind of. We've got a matte mm -hmm. and these two Picassos. Picassos are so I now, think work really well. Also, with we're going to have another other. bead in the background. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're going to have these um, red Picasso red garnet. Red garnet. Mm -hmm. um, these are going to be the base of the bracelet, mm -hmm. and so this is going to be in the background. It's still going to be visible. Maybe this is going to give us our little bit of pop right. of color that mm -hmm. we were kind of after. Um, and so this one, we could add this to our shape mix if we wanted, if you wanted to marry it up a little bit more. Sure. Um, but we're going to use this as the base for this bracelet. And I was so impressed with some of my early morning f people who were looking carefully at the materials list and noticing that we were using Softlex yes. to start this project. Because and you absolutely have to use a little Softlex. Yeah. And so the other things we're using, what are the threads? Talk a little bit about the mm -hmm. threads we're using. We're going to use some Fireline and some Softlex today. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> Softlex is the base for the bracelet. 
So when you start a bracelet um, or a necklace for this piece, what you're going to do is string first the base underneath, and you're going to crimp it to the clasp. So I've got a strung bit of beading wire here with some size 8 seed beads on it, and I'm going to attach it to my clasp. Um, I do like using a crimp cover, but I'm not a guardian kind of person. So mm -hmm. if you feel like you want to add a guardian, please do. You do you. You do you. I just don't find the need for it so much. And I'm going to use that same leafy toggle clasp because I really like it and I, I like the weight toggle. of it mm -hmm. and, and the visual of it too. And we've got that one in the brass for your briar patch mm -hmm. and then for this one we're doing, we're mixing our metals yeah. a little bit so we've used that copper I think it needed a little bead. bit of bright yeah. in there. Yeah so we hit it with the silver whoops mm -hmm. I did two loops there we go with that leafy toggle mm -hmm. so we're there. So Emily to start I cut you told me before the broadcast mm -hmm. to start with a strand of beads uh, or a cut a strand of soft flex that's about 10 to 12 inches. Yeah. Right? So I happen to have a little scrap um, from mm -hmm. another project, so I happen to use this. You know, when you have small pieces of soft flex, don't throw them away. That's a bracelet, and I didn't have to cut anything new. Mm -hmm. um, we're using the .014, which is the fine mm -hmm. size of soft flex. And you can really use any color you want. Yeah, I mean, um, I mostly use the silver. Yeah, we one. earmarked the satin silver. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, if you have some soft flex at home or whatever, you know, whatever color works for right. you. And, so, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. use the antique bronze clasp. Uh -huh. There is no antique bronze in the crimp beads. So right, I happen to be using be a gold it's and then covered. I've got a cover, crimp yeah. cover to go over it. Now I'm like, where's my tape measure? <laughs> it's around my neck. So this bracelet is one of those illustrations of um, when you make it, you need to add about a half an inch to your bracelet measurement. Okay. Because if you don't, the inside diameter gets too small. Too small. Okay. So what I have here, and you brought our bracelet forms that we I made did. a while back, right? I did. Let's see the one that so has your name on it. So Janice That's and Janice. I, here's, um, here's me. So Janice and I made these a while back. And huh? so my finished wrist size is about six and three quarters. I want right. my bracelet to sit. So how much am I going to add? I'd add about a half inch, so okay. about seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. That'd be okay. clasped, clasped to glass, door okay, to door. Okay, door to door. Right. Okay. And so... Um, and why, Emily, are we using soft flex through these beads rather mm -hmm. than Fireline? You know, it's more durable. It's, okay. It's much stronger. Um, it gives us a perfect base for it. Mm -hmm. um, bracelets, I think, are one of our get hardest working wear and tear. Yeah. pieces of jewelry. They get banged around on the desk while we're mousing. They get pulled through coat sleeves, out in and mm -hmm. out of coat sleeves. You wash your hands, they get wet. All those things kind of happen to it. So I think the, f the soft flex makes a great base. Yeah. It's easy to finish as yeah, well. It is easy to finish. And I feel it gives a little bit of body to this piece. It does. You know, a little bit of Then weight. Fireline is really a great thread for doing the fringes here. Again, this is going to take a little bit of abuse. It's also the kind of bracelet that you tend to play with, touch. Yeah. And people want to look at it closely mm -hmm. and see those colors and see all those little shapes and fun things that you got on there. So I pick a soft flex that I think, or the, sorry, fire line that blends well with the beads. Right. You're going to use, um, I think we had set you up with the crystal. Mm -hmm. and, and again, thinking about adding a little bit of brightness because your thread shows here and there just mm -hmm. a tiny bit. And, and I'm and, at uh, seven and a quarter right here. Okay, perfect. Is that <coughs> including so your clasp? I'm at seven and a quarter with beads. So let me, riddle me this, Emily. If I come around and I'm getting towards the end and I kind of try it on, can I take beads off, or do no. I really have to be right on? You really this want to be pretty time. much right, right okay. on. So it's going to so be seven and a quarter, door to door, door with to door. Clasps. Okay. So oh. what I'm going to do is, if I look at this and just to measure for fun, mm -hmm. I go, yeah, okay, that's going to be, that would be my bracelet length. Right. And I don't have my clasp on right. yet. Right. You're too long. So let's go ahead and measure the clasp. This particular clasp, if I put it together. And again, like Emily and I say, the measurement is door to door, which includes like our little crimps and, crimps everything. and everything. Might be a little longer if you use your mm -hmm. guardian. Right. So that clasp is just a hair under an inch. And then with, with crimping, um, I'm going to say this is going to add about, about an, an inch, inch and, and a quarter. quarter. Right. Yep. So we're kind of adding and subtracting mm -hmm. here at the same time. So I'm going to take off, if I'm at seven and a quarter here, inch I'm going to take off an inch and a quarter. Sure. Sounds good. Let's see. 
Let me remeasure. And of course, with a with uh, putting on a clasp with a cl with a crimp, you're going to put one end on at a time. Six and a quarter, perfect. And I tend to, I tend to measure that way myself. I think I lost my crimping plier. Would you mind oh, crimp I, pliering I've me? I've taken both of them. You have. Them. There you go. Thanks. So you put your clasp on first? I do. Yeah, what? you have to. You're crazy. No, no, no. You're crazy. I'm crazy. Richburg's nuts. All right. Well, let's do. I'm going to do. I'm going to do that too. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go up. ahead and put my clasp on. Okay. So. Crimp bead on first, then the clasp. And I'm going to do something else that's going to make Kate crazy, too. What are you going to do? I'll just hold your water there. All right. Lizzie. Come on now. So I'm going to go ahead do? on in there and crimp. Just just, just crimp it. hold yourself. And we Hang have... Hang on there, Richburg. We, You're all good. I'm just saying, we have a great uh, bunch of tutorials, you guys, on the crimping plier. We're yeah. going to do this kind of quickly right now. But in our skill builders section, um, you can find on beadshop.com, you can find a really great uh, tutorial on using the crimping plier. So see how I have a little tail of soft flex? Uh-huh. I'm going to slide it under a few beads. Are you? I am. Yeah. I know that makes you crazy. Well, it's okay. This is your project, I am. Gonna I know, I'm breaking all the rules. It's all right, breaking the law. <laughs> so I'm going to do that too then. Okay. You slide a few through, and we're going to leave, I don't know. I also like to have the, the loop tail. really um, have plenty of room to wiggle in the class with mm -hmm. the soft flex. Mm -hmm. You know? Let's and so throw a measurement on this one. Yeah, yeah. Here you tape. And we're going to um, crimp this in the round, is that right? So we it are. has enough room? Mm-hmm. Just making sure I know what I'm doing here. Yeah, you're doing fine. I'm going to take a couple of beads off. Okay. That was good. I didn't even really measure this one when I did it, and it well, came out pretty close. You've been beading a couple of years. Uh, yeah, now and again. And Naomi just mentioned, um, oh, my mom, bless her heart. My mom knows that sometimes I can't subtract. My mom says, Kate, yours should be six inches. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ma. I'll fix that up. <laughs> Naomi also said that um, you can color fire line with a permanent marker. You can. Copy. Yeah, you can color a lot of beading threads that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mama. Let's make sure that this beading portion is six inches. My mom is terrible. I'm going to do it just one bead past. Okay. There we go. My mom knows me well. She does. Yeah, leaving a little air for everybody to wiggle around in there is quite good. But there's there's tricks to be had down the road, so mm -hmm. don't you worry. Tricks. Tricks are for Lots kids. of tricks. So, uh, well, I want... What? I'm looking for a good cramp. Hmm. Fewer and far Sorry. between. That's Sorry. Right. Pardon, me. Pardon, Pardon me. Pardon me. Hmm. Sorry. Sorry. There we go. Squeeze through there. Okay, so I'm going to put this on, and again, as Emily was saying, we go back through that crimp tube, just mm -hmm. like so, and then before we tighten it all the way, we're going to close that clasp, because we don't, we do not want this project to be, uh, to be too tight, or to have this bracelet, the base be too right. tight. Right. Now, em, do you, and you may have covered this while mm. I was trying to struggle with this and measure wrong, um, do we need to intentionally leave more space no. in this? No, just make it as fringe? if it was, make it as if it was a bracelet okay. you were going to wear okay. by itself. So no extra no. room? For okay, now, right. no. Okay. No. Right. In fact, too much room would give you some fits, okay. I think, gotcha. uh, as you're making. So. Because your fringe really wouldn't maybe sit right? Or well, yeah, the fringe might hard. be slopping around mm -hmm. a little bit, and it mm -hmm. wouldn't stick out also. So mm -hmm. I, part of this is I really like it to have some perkiness to yeah. it, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and get this crimp crimped. tube mm -hmm. crimped with my Zeron 4-in-1, which you know how much we love those we around do. these parts. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, remember... That crimping tutorial is on our website mm -hmm. at beadshop.com under skill builders with a lot of other uh, great skill builders. When I do the boas, the over the long ones, uh -huh. I actually put in crimps in several spots. That's clever. Because I don't want you don't things lose to it all. lose it all if mm -hmm. it happens to break. But I actually do exactly the same technique and the soft flex there we go. Um, holds up to the poundage of those pretty mm -hmm. nicely. So now we've got our base. So I right? guess it's almost time to stitch, huh? Right. So you can, at this point, if you like, go ahead and put your crimp covers on, too. Oh, sure. Because um, that leaves you kind of a nice uh, finished okay. look. 
And I actually really like the um, the Zeron 4-in-1s for this step mm -hmm. as well because it's kind of got a fine little point there and I can kind of get in and get my crimp cover mm -hmm. tidied up. I think crimp, crimp covers are... Next to crimp beads, they're the next best thing that ever came out of beadland. Yeah, land, of no, bead land. I agree. I, you know? you know, and with soft flex, you know, we do a lot of the crimping with that. I mean, that's how you close it, right? right? With the soft flex, you don't tie a knot or tie the soft flex onto your clasp. You use what's called a crimp tube, and that crimp tube just goes ahead and. Holds. Why am I all thumbs right now? I don't know. I'm doing. I'm, I'm having the same I'm like, problem. What, what's our problem? Too much coffee or right? not, enough. not enough? I don't. That's I right. think I'm going in the wrong way. There um, we go. There it is. Um, but that's how we traditionally close off our soft flex. Yeah. Right. Is with the crimp tube. And well, it, it's, I just think they look a little mechanical. I'm not. I'm not. They're okay. Yeah. You know? And I even mean, nicely done, they them. look good. Yeah, they but, look good. But um, having a cover is nice. Yeah, I think and, this adds to it for um, sure. And again, we don't have this in a specific kit, but you can see both recipes or both ingredients list, as we like to call them, mm -hmm. on our website at beadshop.com um, under our Put Facebook Live. There. And there's also a recipe, so you can choose Build your, your own. own colorway. There we go. There's my crimp. It was, as you like to say, Emily, giving me the fits. Oh my goodness, that's my favorite saying. That's right. There we go. Or the bugs. And the thing is, so see, and the and I want to show you guys where I was kind of um, uh, struggling a little bit. You need to get that crimp right inside the cover. Mm -hmm. If it's at all off or sideways or funny, then it's just... Gives you fits. Yeah, it's not going to sit right. Yeah. So really get that in there. Then it'll be really easy for you to just come in close and detail it with your four-in-one crimping plier. So that's where the struggle is right there, you guys. The struggle is real um, right on there. Okay? <laughs> and, again, when you're using your crimp cover, you need to have just a little bit of extra space in between your bead and that first crimp mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and your crimp or else, again, because that so crimp cover takes up just a little bit of space. A little hair of space. Yeah, just yep. a bit. So we're going to do this as well. We're going to close this up. All right, now we're almost ready to stitch, mm -hmm. right, Em? Yep. Okay. So we're going to use... So what happens now? Now we're going to use some fire line for okay. this. Okay. And I like fire line because it's wiry and super strong. Mm -hmm. But to even make it a little stronger and a little bit beefier, mm -hmm. we are going to use it doubled. Okay. This is a place where... It can give you some fits. If you feel like you're getting tangly, mm -hmm. use a shorter piece. Okay. Okay. And also, you can, if you want to beeswax this while you're working with ask. it, you can throw a little beeswax on it. It's not 100% necessary, mm -hmm. but um, it's definitely something you can try. There should be some in there. I'm looking for our wax. Yep. Have I taken it out? I might have to go grab some. It's all right. I Do you want like me to thread your needle for you? Would you talk a little bit about needling that thread? I will. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some beeswax just real okay. quick. Um, because you know how I feel about beeswax. Right. I'm going to take off, not not a wingspan, but maybe fingertips to nose and a little bit more. So I'm probably working with about um, uh, a yard and some change. And I'm going to grab a pair of thread snips out of here and cut off my fire line. To thread your needle, my my not original but highly recommended technique is to not thread the needle but needle the thread. That's right. So I've got a size 10 needle here, which is fairly large, and I'm going to actually put it right down over the eye of the needle. And sometimes a little sawing back and forth motion will allow you to slip in there. Brando, am I reading your... Am I in okay? Yeah, you're, you're good. Right? That little sawing motion will allow that that thread to slip through and then I'm gonna here's your needle right here oh great pull that thread through and this is the um, fire line the four fire pound. line the four pound mm -hmm. right yeah so I'm gonna bring my two ends together pretty pretty evenly and then the thread down to the middle of those two pieces and then I will wait for Kate to catch up I will thank you and for getting the wax I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
and just go ahead and wax my uh, before stuff you thread bit. before you put the needle on. I do. Oh, huh? okay. I am a. I don't know why I do that, but I do. I always do it after. Do you? Mm-hmm. And I just run it through that wax, and I always what I do when I'm when I'm stringing my seed bead needle. Mm. You wax the tip of the. I thread. do. Mm -hmm. I wax it, wax it, wax it, and I try and flatten it with my thumb. And then, I love for this our old school thread snips. Mm hmm They're the best. And I, I kind of clip that. And then, sometimes, I come in. Give it a little flatten. And I give it, yeah, there we go. I flatten it a little bit. And can you see, it's hard. I know it's going to be a little super wider. hard mm -hmm. for you guys to see that. But I've flattened, and the width is now a little bit wider. Then, just like Emily has told me, I'm going to go ahead and needle that thread and instead of thread the needle, and there it goes right through. So those are all little tricks that, and I can't see anymore, you guys, so that was just dumb luck. Yeah. Um, so, so a little bit of wax helps things kind of slide around a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it also makes these two threads that we're using, this double thread, that makes them stick together, mm -hmm. which keeps you from splitting threads mm -hmm. and getting tangles. And I can run it one more time too. Sure. I'm not pressing a whole bunch of thread or a bunch of beeswax into the thread, but take a look at how my waxed thread looks versus Emily's unwaxed thread. See, it's a lot more um, behaving. Be yeah, it's a lot. It's not as unruly. Yeah, yeah. I guess. This one. This. Yeah, I think people can see it. Okay. And then, Emily, people were asking about the size of Fireline. Mm -hmm. Can they use a heavier pound absolutely. and not double it? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make a knot at the end of my, th my thread. Okay. Okay. And I, I do this the way I do it with um, bead embroidery, too. Mm -hmm. I lay the ends of my thread towards the eye of my needle, mm -hmm. hold it with my finger, wind around a few times, and I'm going to hold that little coil right on the needle, and then I'm going to pull the thread through. That's this such a, a clever one way. One time you don't want to be wearing a textured fringe bracelet is when you're making knots. Mm -hmm. okay. So you take that little stitch on through. Yep. And then I would wax my mm -hmm. my thread. Then you wax. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really even matter which way you pull it through. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a com uh, conversation going on in another um, Facebook, Facebook group that I belong to about seed beading. And one of the things that can happen to you when you're beading with a needle and thread is the place where the thread goes through the needle, through the eye of the needle, that's kind of a sensitive spot. And that thread, if it's rubbing back and forth, can wear on that spot. Mm -hmm. So when you pull your needle through, um, really what you're using the needle through to do is to get through a tight spot. And then if you pull it through and grab the thread behind the needle mm -hmm. in your fingers, and then pull the rest of the thread through that way, it absolutely helps the wear and tear on that spot on the thread, okay? If you're using single thread and you're moving it around um, as you go, then you may have that same problem, but it might be in several spots. Right, so you so. just want to be really aware because that's a point where yeah. things can... things get wear, worn yeah. on. Worn. So, All I right. made a chart for you guys. Hooray, Emily has a chart. I'm back with my charts. Thank goodness. Right? One of the things I, I like to do with um, charting is to get you kind of know what's coming up next. And um, this will be with the <clears throat> episode notes, and maybe we mm -hmm. can post it later yeah, today. Yeah, I'll post it in the group. Okay. In the yeah, I put, it in the, I put it in the Google okay, Docs great, already. Great, great. So here is um, the textured fringe, mm -hmm. and we do this in three, what I like to call passes. Mm -hmm. So here's my bracelet pre-strung. Mm -hmm. There's my crimps. There's my... Whoops, sorry, sorry. I was going to lay mine on there, and I, I made a mess. Yeah. Look. Sorry. So this is somewhat simplified, obviously, because mm -hmm. we have more beads, right? right? Um, and this is not to scale or length. But what it shows you is that each pass, as we work our thread in between the beads and make our fringes, mm -hmm. each pass, once down, turning around, coming back the other direction, mm -hmm. has a different fringe style for it. Oh, okay? okay. And how many passes do you make? Three. Okay. Okay. So the first pass is going to be the long fringe. Okay. It's going to have six size 11 beads, a shape bead, and another bead is the turnaround, okay. and then back through. Okay. Second pass is going to be the, the wider pass. Mm -hmm. It's got a shape bead at the base, mm -hmm. and then four beads on top. And you just pass Turn around and mm -hmm. back through. Yeah. So 
these two actually do different things, right? Each one has a kind of a, has its own job. This is going to be the length. This is going to give it the push the, to spread. The, right. And then pass number three is a medium length pass. So it's a shorter pass, but similar to pass number one. Okay. When we get done, we'll have a three pieces coming out in between every pair of beads, three fringes. So as you go along, you don't skip any beads. No. You go from number one in between bead one and two, then between bead two and three. Mm -hmm. Then okay, gotcha. Actually I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you because I okay. don't actually start with bead number one. You don't? I don't. There's a there's a here's a little hard one tip for you. My very first pass that I'm gonna do, mm -hmm. and my second actually mm -hmm. Um, I don't go underneath the first bead or the second bead. Okay. I actually move down several. Oh. So what I've found is that as we're stringing along, and depending on how much fringe you make and how bulky your fringe is, this length of bracelet and beads make it very tight and make it really hard to get in between the beads. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, and it probably will, you can go back and break out a bead. Oh, so okay. So I do it with a plier. And I grasp the plier, the bead on either side, and I just break Pop the bead. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I have more room and everybody's mm -hmm. kind of happy again. Mm -hmm. But doing it with lots of room to work with, you're constantly fighting that slopping feeling. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to do that ahead of time. Okay. So as you're going along, you've got three fringe styles to work with. But you can also do other styles of fringe okay. if you like. I'm One well. fringe you might do would be a loopy fringe. Okay. Right? So that would be to have your thread come out. And you might put on a loop of six or eight beads yeah. and go right around and come back in. Mm -hmm. So you can actually in incorporate these. You could put a bigger bead right here ask if, if you, you wanted. Like a shape bead. Or sure. if you have like a drop, that's a good place for a yeah, drop, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can also make a, a leaf shape mm -hmm. fringe if you like. So I usually start with about three beads is going to be the stalk. Mm -hmm. And then I might put on about uh, four or five. And one of these beads, my, my thread comes through it, one of these beads is going to be my turnaround stalker, bead. Right? right? So I'm going to come around, come back, and add some more beads until I get to that stem and go back in. And mm -hmm. I end up with a little leaf shape. Mm -hmm. So you can do any and all of those mm -hmm. as much as you really feel cool. like you want to. Right? Cool. You can actually put roller beads, bigger beads that have big holes mm -hmm. that would actually fit around this and mm -hmm. move around on the, the loop itself. On the loop. That'd yeah. be cool. Absolutely. Right, so it would go over those mm -hmm. seed beads. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the sky's really at the limit on these. Yeah, and fringe is really fun. You can okay. make this as you as it makes you happy. I'm going to okay. steal this triangle real what? quick. I'm going to move my beads to my mat and I guess let's get started. Well, let me show you how I like to start. All right, okay. talk to me. Um, we did have on the materials list, which I noticed everybody's getting really good at, um, at checking. checking out which all those. Like. I'm impressed. Um, when I get done with a piece of thread, and mm -hmm. one of the things that textured fringe is, is extremely thread heavy. Mm -hmm. You will use a fair amount of thread in this piece, okay? In fact, I think I used a whole spool uh, of, of fire small, line. The 15 yards. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. have um, uh, any doubts, get two spools. Mm -hmm. It'll always come in handy. Um, so I'm going to change threads fairly often. Okay. And ultimately, I'm going to put a little glue on the knots that I've made so that I can trim off those tails of thread. Oh, okay. Okay? But this is super simple, uh, and I want to I wanna show you how to do one before you get started because you're going to go, oh, I didn't know it was going to be that easy. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I'm going to have a small volcano. Mm -hmm. um, I love me some volcanoes, right? Mm -hmm. We all remember what that is so that we can just scoot our needle through. So I'm going to slide my needle through. And I'm going to pick up six size 11 beads. So I actually picked up a bunch, but I actually picked up and nine six. or eight. Okay. So I'm going to kick off a couple. Okay. All right. And I'm going to pick up a shape bead, and this can be any shape bead you like. Okay. All right. I'm going to pick up one more size 11. Okay. Now notice we have not yet attached mm -hmm. anything to this not bracelet. Attached. So when you start a new thread, take all these beads, slide them down to my knot. Slide Every time you down. start a thread or end a thread, mm -hmm. this is the process you're going to end up with. Okay. So skipping that last bead, that last little stopper I put on the end, 
I'm going to bring my needle back through these beads and mm -hmm. come out right next to the knot. Okay. Okay. And any loops of thread here, you want to pull that guy up tight. Okay. So the other thing you could try on this too is instead of just having a single bead here, mm -hmm. you could actually use three beads, a pico, a pico mm -hmm. right? And that'd be just for decoration, sure. just kind of a, a fun way of fluffing it up some. I like the sound of that. Yeah. So I'm going to pick up my strand of beads, my bracelet base, mm -hmm. and I'm going to. Does it matter if you start on the toggle end nope. or the loop end? Doesn't no, matter. Doesn't really okay. matter. I I don't even think I have a preference okay. at this point. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go under and through one bead. And I chose the fourth one from the clasp. Okay. So I'm just going to go through the bead. Then that's what I'm choosing. All right. Oops. I dropped it and now I got the fifth one. Go through that guy. Come on now. Sorry, this is a focal issue, not anything else. Here comes my needle. Remember that. Just get it through and then grasp the thread behind the needle. Pull the thread through. And there's your first fringe. And so my fringe is sitting between bead number three and bead number four? Correct. And this little tail is okay right here? For now, yes. Okay. So I usually deal with my tails when I change threads. Okay. I will deal with a, a bit of thread, um, or if I'm going to take a break. Okay. I'll deal with my uh, adding a little glue on those knots and then move on. So we're going to continue. So I just do wash, rinse, rinse, repeat. Right? Lather, rinse, repeat. Okay. Go under the next bead along. All right. I can oh, do that. I made a loop without even by accident. How terribly clever you How? Are. No, no. I don't. I'm going to undo. Remember, when you undo, it's better to take it out eye first. Mm hmm. I meant to do this, and I was jumped the gun. And sorry, you guys, if you can hear, they're doing a little bit of road work outside of our office. So if you hear something that sounds like road work, it is. <laughs> the joy of doing a live broadcast. Yeah, who knew that it was going to be cutting, right, cutting right outside, concrete today? Yes, Yay, right outside fun! Our window. Yes. Fantastic. So it's a little noisy. So after I've gone through um, these, uh, going back through my fringe, can I. Go Do I need to go bead? through all of the beads, or can I just go a little bit faster and then go through that next bead? Go through that next bead okay. all at once. All at once. If okay. you like. Great. Brandon, so you see any questions we're missing? Well, I'm. one of the things is people want to see what you're doing, and so I'm trying to, one, one of you talks about something, and then the other one, so I'm trying to go okay. kind of give an overview and then trying to get close up to... How am I, how am I here? Is this a good spot for it's you? It's a good spot. I all just, right. Uh, let it's me, just um, hard because you're both kind of doing interesting things and talking about your various pieces, so I'm trying to go back <laughs> and forth. Let me uh, get going me. here, and uh, I will um, get myself... I'll nail my arm to the table. <laughs> now, one thing I noticed that um, I have struggled with for a long time is kind of keeping control of those threads and things out of the way so they don't get tangled. So mm -hmm. I tend to pull them to the side and kind of hold them down with my finger. So again, we're six beads on, mm -hmm. shape bead, stopper bead, back down through, and back down through the next bead. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not worrying about that little knot, that little tail one, of thread. That tail of thread. Yeah. We're just letting it go. You just let it hang out okay. out there. It's all right. It's all good. All right. Now, one thing I do like to watch is my stopper beads. Sometimes I get kind of on a jag, and it's the same color every time. Mm -hmm. So I do try and consciously pick a stopper bead That's so that it's kind of a different color or kind of goes with the bead that I, or is a contrasting color to the bead I just put on. Um, so. I was a rebel. I did a pico. Did you? I did. Ooh. Who did a pico? He did a pico. I did. I like a pico. <laughs> And do you find, Emily, that these fringes lay on either side, or do these kind of all kind of default to one side of what you're beating? Well, I tend to push them around a little bit. Okay. So I tend to push them under my fingers in the palm of my hand over okay. here, just to kind of get them out of the way. Okay. But 
ultimately, you know... They're going to lay where they lay. Right? They're, you're going to have neighbors in between each one of these. There's mm -hmm. going to be a short one that's stout and a short one that's the same shape. So the long one gives you that long, graceful fringe. The short one with mm -hmm. the be shape bead at the bottom gives you mm -hmm. a little pushing out. So you're going to have three fringes sticking out like right. that. Right, and so essentially, base. and you guys, you can watch us on the replay where we discuss all of the different um, beads that we use. But we're using the 11 knots for the base of the fringe. And then Emily is referring to all of the little mm, 4 millimeter, 3 millimeter. I have mm -hmm. a little temple bead here. Oh, I can't um, wait to see those temples and the fringes. Oh. Yeah, aren't they nice? We've yeah. used the 6. We've used, so we're referring those to those as our shape beads so when Emily says put a shape bead on the end it's one of it's from this pile you guys can see this pile what Emily has here melons and all kinds of cool stuff and then the 11 knots are this pile right over here so I see somebody's working along with us Cindy okay I can show you again what to do give me just a second all right so really what I did was I first created a fringe that wasn't attached to anything and this is my first one right here at the at the uh, beginning of the piece and that first little fringe I just needled under a size 8 bead and pulled my thread through and it stopped that acted as a stopper and it's it held in place and then I went in between every bead and created a fringe and went through the next one so each bead on the base row is going to have three fringes, each pair of beads on the base row, I should say, is going to have fringes coming out from in between it, like that, okay? Cindy, I hope that helps. One thing I have um, noticed over time with um, teaching is that sometimes it's really hard to watch and do at the same time. And we have plenty of time today. I'd love to have you just kind of watch a few more steps and then um, we'll let you get started we'll get on yours. You going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I like that little tip where I've gone through. So what I've got here is mm -hmm. I've got all of my fringe ready, and, and then you're going through it one I'm step. just going through. Yep, the fringe and the next bead. Perfect. All in one step. Yep, that's a great call. And the shorter amount of thread, I think I cut mine maybe a little bit shorter than you, mm -hmm. and because I'm not afraid to add thread. And, no, 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 no. And and it, but it does make it easier. Yeah, longer thread just would make you nuts. sometimes does make me crazy. Yep. Just but like are you pico. varying the colors of your pico? I'm trying. Oh, the beads in the pico? Or yeah. just all one color or different no, colors? No, some different, some oh, the same. okay. So Look here's... how nice that pico looks yeah. on that little rondelle. I love right? those little rondelles. I was going to do a pico here on top of my little small shadow. Mm -hmm. So I've got three beads instead of just one as the ender for my fringe. Mm -hmm. So when I skip them, I'm going to go back through that shadow and all the beads on the fringe and then I'm going to slip underneath that through that size eight. Mm -hmm. Come on you. Push my needle through, gets to the other side. Remember, I'm just going to grab the thread. And then as this tightens down, those little picos are going to, the little beads are going to stand up right on the end and make a little clover kind of shape on the end of that mm -hmm. fringe. It's really nice, you know? So typically, I will do one whole pass with one style of fringe. The mm -hmm. easiest part about this is that I don't have to keep track of what I'm doing. Right. I just do the six, whole thing the same. A stack of six, yeah. a shape, a stopper, or a pico. Right, and, and on, turn it on and on. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that, that seems to be the easiest thing to remember, and I don't have to, um, you know, worry my brain what's going to happen Now show that next. little tip again, M, for people. I know that some people have joined us a little bit later. So you, your little tip for making it as random as you can by yes. taking out, I think that's really great because kind of the triangle. I think, yep, you bet. I have a tendency to um, fall get into, into a pattern. Fall into a pattern, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm the queen of random, but you still, it's easy to fall into that pattern. So one thing you can do to help yourself make more of a random pattern is to make a little line of beads. 
But then you have to say, okay, self, I promise that I will pick these beads up in the order that I see them. And mm -hmm. so I would just start here. And you notice that I un I unwrangled that a little bit because they're all those purple ones together and I had to unpurple it a little bit. Right. So just start picking up in this order. And this will be as random as possible. So one of the things that happens with some bigger beads is they're going to kind of float in the way and they're going to maybe come forward or back a little bit. The littler beads get hidden. But make yourself a promise that I'm going to do whatever's here and I'm not going to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it. And the nice thing about this is this is just one pass. Right. Your first pass looks like a wet cat anyhow, mm -hmm. right? It looks like a drowned rat. That second pass, things will start to kind things of start to look, look nice. a little more interesting. Yeah. And the third pass, you say, oh, okay, really now mm -hmm. I've used two of those white rondelles close to each mm -hmm. other. I want to not use one. So on this, can you, for demonstration purposes... I wish I was planning on it. Oh, you're going to turn around. Yeah. Yeah, you're, so, you're terribly clever. Actually, I wasn't going to turn around. Well, I could turn around, for sure. I, I didn't know. even so think about we it. Can see, sure. um, we can see the, you know... the Your hand's kind of creating a little bit of a shadow. Ah, so, okay. Yeah. okay. So we can see the lusciousness. Right. And holding so, it at a, a little bit of an angle helps, too. Okay, like that. Perfect. Beautiful. So, yes, I can turn around here. Um, typically, I would go straight on down the all line the way through. all the way through. So to turn around, it pretty much is just turning this turning over. Turning it around. <laughs> Going to the next one. <laughs> just terribly clever. <laughs> so the next pass that I would do is going to be that mm -hmm. shape bead first. So mm -hmm. this is the short stout pass. Mm -hmm. The pass that we are going to use to help push these out just right. a bit. Right? Right. So I'm going to grab any of my shape beads. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to grab... One, two, three, four of my 11s. Mm -hmm. And so it's really three with a turnaround, mm -hmm. but four all together. And so this is, you guys, the second pass. So Emily used the shape bead on the top of the fringe for her first pass. Well, at the, oh yeah. And Sorry. the second pass, she's using that shape bead at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the shape bead moves around in this fringe. And again, you can and see. And its job is to make things stick out a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you feel like you're getting two, two big shape beads side by side, that's fine. Mm -hmm. you, can un you can change it. Change it up a bit. Change it up, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, random is hard. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think we're naturally, as humans, we try to Bring seek order, order to right. uh, chaos right. as much as we can. Um, and you still have plenty of room in there, right? You're oh, yeah. not You're oh, not... No. And I know that some of you are thinking, oh, is there enough room for all three of those... Um, Absolutely. ...of those little fringe ends to come out? And believe me, there is. Okay? I would not tell and you if there weren't. That's right. And you guys, don't worry. Emily's going to show you how to change threads. So don't stress. We wouldn't leave you hanging. No. No. Don't you worry. Yeah. Not to worry. Uh, not even. Don't even worry your pretty little head. That's right. Because I love changing thread. Look what I did. Not. I was a rebel. I put two temples. <gasps> cool. Right. I like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because why not? Yeah. Because you know what? That looks good. It's my bracelet. Is it your bracelet? I don't know. <laughs> it is right now, anyway. And so, for the turnaround, um, you do, you exit between two of the size eights. Yep. Do your fringe, and then you enter between the same size eight. Yep. Correct. So Absolutely. It's like you go up and down. So mm -hmm. there's you don't skip it. Your fringe doesn't sit over the bead. It sits in between the beads. Correct. Yeah. And I like to do just a few of these just to kind of give you a feel for the little yeah. troubles and um, triumphs mm -hmm. that come with these guys, and sort of how it looks. Um, I found that doing the passes seemed to be the most sensible thing for me. If you felt like you wanted to do this in little chunks like this, you could, you, you could, know. Sure. Sure. Um, I do feel like anything I can do to help with tangling and avoid tangling, mm -hmm. I'm going to do as much of that as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. See, look, I'm going away from my line already. Yeah, I'm already. going, oh, yeah. No, but no, see, I'm it's, one of those it may be so. easier to see with this lighter thread, too. Mm -hmm. So see, you guys, where this thread is coming out in between those A dots? I've put my beads on, and I'm going back, just right in between, and going through the next. Cindy, A you dot. are correct. 
Yes, you're mm -hmm. coming out of an eight-aught, and but when I bring the fringe down, I go through the next eight. The next Correct. one. Yep, exactly. And exactly. are the, the biggest beads are just the ones at the end? You don't have them in the middle anywhere? Well, we they're in the second pass, they're at the bottom. Okay. So the shape yep. beads, which is easier maybe to dis distinguish than bigger or smaller, the shape beads are at the dangly ends of the first fringe, so mm -hmm. on the outside edge. We bring them inside, internal, on the second pass to help us give us a little bit of support inside there and make everything sort of stick out. Mm -hmm. So a la Caterpillar, mm -hmm. right? And then they okay. change position again on the third mm -hmm. pass. Correct. Mm -hmm. Would I add knots as, as I go in case one fringe breaks? You know, now, Linda, now that I am using Fireline, I don't find the need for that. Uh, before, when I used uh, other seed bead threads that were a little bit more fragile, I did actually work um, with a few knots here and there. But really, you're going to change threads fairly often. If your fringe were to break and you had loose beads, which has happened to me a couple of times, um, I would just unfringe those fringes until I had enough thread to tie it to off. To tie it off. And then, and then go in and mend it. Yeah. Stitch. Yeah. It really, it was a, unfortunate, sense. but it was not a, not was a, not a giant yeah. pain. Yeah. Nope. That looks great. So, um, you're almost ready to make another turnaround. I am. Correct. That's terribly exciting. Mm -hmm. And again, there's still, I'm just going along with my first pass, you guys. There's plenty, there's plenty of room. I'm not encountering any issues, so don't fret. So, you know, I said to start in a few beads from the end when we began, in case we had to break out a bead. And mm -hmm. I, I know that breaking out a bead is kind of a scary thing for people. Yeah, but you can um, do it. It's not, it's really easier than you think. Mm -hmm. And and again, we use Softflex, which is not going to, it's going to laugh at a little broken seed bead glass mm -hmm. and go, ha, ha, ha. ha. Um, right. So it's really not going to worry it. There's a couple ways to break out a bead. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, I'm going to use a plier. Okay. Um, you could also use an awl mm -hmm. by pushing an awl inside the bead and letting it burst the bead from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Kate, would you hand me a round nose plier, please? I would indeed, Emily Miller. There it is. Mm -hmm. Somebody also mentioned a while back when we were talking about breaking the beads, she puts a needle inside the bead. Yeah, you can do that too. It's kind of like a little buffer. Buffer. Mm -hmm. So I actually break it not around the bead this way. No, because you could crush. I could crush something mm -hmm. inside. I actually break it by grabbing hold of it sideways. So mm -hmm. I'm going to grab it up and down. Yep, I do the same thing. And I want to go to one that doesn't have anything in it yet. I do it actually with an old wire cutter. Oh, I just do it with the pliers. Mm -hmm. And don't fear, everybody. Emily's a... She's a professional. I'm professional. <laughs> we do want you to try this at home. We do. And it's not that difficult. No. You know, especially as Emily was saying, if it's on the soft flex, you're not going to. And if this uh, gives work. you any indication of how sturdy these beads are, yeah. you know, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want to try and get the. No, no. No, you're all right. I'm good. It's just slipping around a little yeah. bit. The finish on that bead is, can be a little. Yeah, I think slidey. that's. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah doesn't want to break. Mm -mm. Wants to stay on there mm -mm. and be. Um, oh, I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take a gamble. Okay, do it. There we go. Bam. And that softlex laughed at that. Ha 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 ha. Right. So cover it when you break it because mm -hmm. you don't want little bits of glass flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's given you a little more room. Sure. Now, too. now I have a little right. bit of extra space. And so you uh, uh, broke that bead at. The top, so that's why you had your three up here, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got a little bit. I'm of a little bit of. I'm a little bit of insurance. Mm -hmm. So as I finished my bracelet, I threw a few extra fringes in there to compensate, mm -hmm. right? So so you kind of tapered. It I down tapered a it down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's really unnoticeable, even if you don't have enough fringes there. You don't mm -hmm. have the three between each one. No one will ever know, mm -mm. right? No one's ever the wiser, right? So you're going to do demo the third fringe. The I thought I would. Pass, I thought I would. And then maybe we'll change threads. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. That's a great plan. 
Is it a good plan? It's, a, it's sure? a fine plan. It's a fine plan. Yeah. All right. I think so. <laughs> terribly, terribly good plan. This is really fun to do these fringes. You know, I, I tell you, it's just nothing but dessert. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the fun part. Mm -hmm. it I really mean, is. laying out all those colors of beads, mixing them together, poking around, playing around with them, it's the best. You know what would be really cool with this on the ends are our check drops. Oh, yeah. Would be great. Yeah. With and this. they're kind of getting up to that biggish size. Yeah. So, um, oh, you know what else you can do with a drop? Let me get my chart back in I here I don't know, but you're going to tell me. I'm going to show you. Yeah, you are. So let's just say you're going to use a teardrop-shaped bead, mm -hmm. right? Sorry, that's not a very good teardrop, but <laughs> you can live with it, right? So it's a round. It's, uh, no, I really meant a teardrop. Okay, I'm drawing upside down and I'm under pressure. can't do it. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what you can do is bring in a few beads, mm -hmm. go through that teardrop, mm -hmm. come out again, and then bring your thread like you're doing that stem sort of shape. Right, right. And this will make a little Y around your bead. Let me show you what that looks like on this guy. Yeah, it's nice. Here, Brandwin. Can you get that guy in there? I think it is. Okay. All right. I'm going to hold, st I'm gonna hold right. still. And um, Cindy Brooke was saying that you could um, use a 50 knot for the very top as well. Oh, you absolutely. Could, tiny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're on, uh, so now we're on the third pass. Right. So let's talk about the turnaround again, you guys, because I think yeah. it's so easy that you don't realize how easy it is. It's easier than you might yeah. think. Right? So Emily is completed on her first pass and come around and completed on her second pass. So we did the long fringe mm -hmm. as our first pass, the short and stout mm -hmm. as the second pass. And I put a little note here. Six elevens, a shape bead, and one eleven. Mm -hmm. Pass number two, one shape bead, four elevens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pass number three. I know some of you are waiting with bated breath for this. Four elevens, a shape bead, and an eleven. Mm -hmm. Right. So that fringe is a little shorter than. Correct. So it the fills in one. the kind of the middle mm -hmm. of it all. Okay. So when I say turn around, if I've finished, if I've completed this fringe. I'm going to go through this bead right next door, out, and come up, okay? If I don't want to go any further, I've completed this fringe, I can actually go back through this direction. Mm -hmm. So that would be, to me, turning around. Mm -hmm. and, we and so you usually do the whole thing? Typically, I do the whole piece. But you I could just, do it in parts. You could do it in chunks. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's maybe a little less tangly. Mm -hmm. If I'm able to hold those fringes out of the way, and I don't have fringes on both sides. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, by both sides, I mean some fringe here and some fringe here. Mm -hmm. Just working one direction, and then I have to turn it around, mm -hmm. and then I've got fringe on both sides. So let's go ahead and turn it around on your yep. actual piece. Let's do it. So I'm at a point where I could turn around. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make a, a short fringe here. I'm going to use four seed beads, one, two, three, four, a shape, and one more seed bead on top of that shape. Okay, give you a moment to see that. I'm going to slide it down to the base, it's the eights, size eights. I'm going to go through, skip the last bead, go through the shape and those four fringes, and back through, heading into my work. Mm -hmm. Coming and out of that one, bead. Let's get pretty tight on that. I'm as tight as I can get. Okay. okay. It's a little delayed on our screens, yeah. you know. It's and pull that up. So there is the first one that has all three fringes coming out mm -hmm. of it. Okay. I'm going to repeat that. This is the second, the third fringe. This is four, a shape of some sort, and another bead on top. One more 11. Skip the bead at the end, through those the shape bead and those other four beads, through that size eight bead on the front on the base, and then pull my needle through. Okay. Right. So I could turn around here and go the other way too. Yeah. You can go back. So and turning forth. around is just 
turning around. It's just turning around. I have a little tiny piece of thread here. Oh. I have two That was unfortunate. Thread. Yeah. I so, should take it out. Huh? Kate, Kate made a little bit of a... I was so excited to make fringe. Rookie error here. That I... <laughs> I only have that much thread. So I can I'll just take it out. Right? I can I can actually make that work for you without you having to do much. I don't mind take Oh, should I take out one? One. Let me take out one. Actually, you so know what? See back through the eye of the needle. Yeah. Instead of doing that. Uh-huh. Just take it out to this point. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, you really did a good job. I know it's you. super, super. It's a little short. Yeah. Let me take it out. All right. There we go. Should I, let me take out this. No, 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 no. All right. Nay, nay. All right. So this is actually kind of a good point because when I'm seed beating, after years of giving myself the bugs mm -hmm. and being frustrated, I always try and leave myself about four or five inches of thread mm -hmm. to turn off, not, to tie off with. Not the small, not that two small. inch. No. Nope. If you find yourself having to lean over to get the beads, mm -hmm. it's time mm -hmm. <laughs> to change threads. So what I'm going to do with Kate's thread is sort of what I would do in the case of too short a thread. But my thread isn't too short. And I'm going to show you what I would do typically for ending a thread. Okay? I'm going to end on a, with a fringe. So I'm going to take my four beads, mm -hmm. my shape bead, and my stopper bead. Slide it down go through, but this time I'm not going to go through the size 8 bead. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming out at the base of the fringe, mm -hmm. the fringe next to the size 8s. Okay? I'm going to pull this up snug to the base. Mm -hmm. So I've tightened so my fringe. All the slack is taken up. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do is just wrap around my finger mm -hmm. and around the base of the fringe. So I have a little loop. And you're going to take a couple of stitches. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just like that. Now, if this happens to creep up and it's in between not the base, at the very base of the bead, that's okay. No one will know. Mm -mm. Now, since I have double thread too, I will take the advantage of separating my threads, giving it a little tug to tighten it up. Mm -hmm. Then I'm just going to trim. Here. Oh, here. Oh, you've got them. Leaving a small tail. Mm -hmm. Okay. That little bit of tail will alert me to where I need to glue. Okay, mm -hmm. And when you finish off a thread, or if you're going to take a break, it's a good time to glue. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you want to glue now? Sure. I'm, do you want a baggie? Nope. Okay. And this was just to ascertain, um, I know you guys have a couple more questions, but you can always watch it on the replay. Hang on. But <laughs> you do have three fringes coming out between the two A-dots, and... If you want to do the whole complete pass all the way across the bracelet, that's what I you usually can, do. Or you can do it in shorter, um, in shorter segments. I'm just really going to dab a little, on little what works for you. Dab a little glue on each of those knots. That first one was my first knot, and here's my finish. And I'm just going to let it dry. And mm -hmm. It actually holds itself up off the surface of the table pretty mm -hmm. well. Now, for Kate, for your too short a thread, mm -hmm. how about you cut off your needle? And I can um, just tie right around. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. you'll be fine. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut my needle away. I'm going to split these threads. I know it's a little hard for you guys to see because this thread is white. But I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring my little fringe. I'm going to kind of pop my fr Actually, you know what? I'm going to take the tail Yes, Cindy out. and Lynn, you are correct. Both of go. your questions and thoughts. And Martha. Yes. Okay. So let me tighten this down. Okay, so I'm going to separate my threads. I'm going to tie a half hitch on this side to tighten it down, like so. Then I'm going to turn the whole thing over, and I'm going to do a full square knot right over left, and down, and left over right, and down. Then I'm going to add my glue and continue with my life. Now, M, to start the thread, again? we start it again just as we did when we began this thing, right? Right. So I'm going to start up a new thread. Do it. So, yes, to show you this sort of in 
uh, with a little bit of speediness to it. I did make all three fringes a little bit overlapping at this point, but typically I would work from one end to the other with one style of fringe. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have to think so about it. So that you're in the, like what I'm doing here. I'm like going to continu continue going yep. with this first pass. Absolutely. And then the second pass is the short and stout mm -hmm. pass. So the fatter bead, the shape bead, is at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And four, friend, four 11s on top, skipping the last one, turning around. The final pass, and that's a pass I would also use for filling in mm -hmm. um, any of those little bits and pieces that I uh, skipped at the ends. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be the short pass with four size 11s, a shape bead, and one size 11 on top. And that being said, though, um, there's really no wrong or right to this. True. Right? I mean, if you feel like you've done a place where, oh, that feels a little bare. Right. Just yeah. be a little more bead heavy with it, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's okay. So I, I do find that the my typical way of doing it is, for me, the most comfortable um, again, I like to not have to think about it too much. Yeah. Um, and just kind and of motor fast. along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this uh, bracelet is probably a four to five hour project. Um, For you, maybe. But <laughs> if you're if you're there. catching up on old Netflix That's or right. um, seed be bin, uh, binge binge watching, yeah, Netflix um, and chill and beat. Yeah, absolutely. Or um, you know, you're, God forbid, at a concert with kindergartners or something that <laughs> right. takes a long time. because yeah, this isn't too bad of, of a travel. You could put no, a little bit of your no. beads in. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You don't really have to have much of your mix at a time mm -hmm. out. You mm -hmm. can have kind of a modest amount. Yeah. Yep. And so you tied your knot already, I right? did. I tied a knot and I threaded my needle, wax, uh, tied a knot, and waxed my thread. And you don't need, again, we don't cut the tail off or anything no, because I that'll just wait. show us where we're going to glue later. Right. And I glue, I let all the glue dry and then... Um, then you'll trim my everything. tails. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Gita is saying four to five days for her. <laughs> LOL. And Gita, I'm right there with you. I am actually the world's slowest knitter <laughs> and probably the world's slowest. Well, I have, I, my beater. knitting eyes are always bigger than my stomach. I always pick out things that are way right. more complex or finer yeah. things than I really have skills or anything else to do. Yeah. Um, well, somebody was asking do. about a red, what goes well with red. Um, you know, Debbie, that is, red is it, is it Debbie? Yeah, I think Debbie. Debbie, red is a tough color. You know, um, one of the things you can do is look at what's opposite red on the color wheel. That's one kind yeah. of way to play Pur around with purple, it. Purple, I think, right? Purplish, yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of amber and red. I, I agree with you. I think if you add black to things, I think it makes it more formal. Mm -hmm. So if you do red and black, it's going to dress it up a whole lot. Um, but I also like, I tend to work a lot of monochromatically, so I'll pick red and a whole bunch of shades. Mm -hmm. uh, that one yeah, uh, bronze be bead I really like, one of our, mm -hmm. our newer, newer colors of bronzes. Mm -hmm. I really like that with reds, but it also goes with green, so it's mm -hmm. kind of a crazy, it's a crazy uh, color. I also like, and Janice, I know she's saying in her head, I like that kind of burgundy red and Montana blue. That's a oh, yeah. color palette yep. for sure. You know, I might um, play around with the different metallics. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you think red and gold is kind of the the be-all, end-all, but red and copper is going to look real different, mm -hmm. and red and bronze is going to look different. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. my mom is yeah. asking, Gwenda is yeah. asking, uh, how would longer, would you do this with longer fringe? Or is this about the max for, a, maybe on a brace, on a necklace you might do yeah, it Yeah, on a necklace you could. Um, I, I think longer fringe was... You might do graduated longer fringe on a necklace. Mm -hmm. So the fringe, if this is my necklace, and it's going to be a lariat like I make mine, the fringe down here might be longer than the fringe around the back. Mm -hmm. That might be one way to, to play around with some mm -hmm. longer shapes. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I would not do my fringe too long. I think too it would long. be catchy. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pick up again and start off. So I've got my needle and thread. I'm going to pick up six beads. You know, if you wanted to make these a little longer, Gwenda, try try something with eight beads. See what it looks mm -hmm. like. You know? Well, you have, you gave my mom one of your boas. I gave Mary a boa. 
Oh, what did you give my mom? I gave your mom some kumihimo. Oh, it's kumihimo. Okay. Yeah. Well, I knew it was a say something necklace. It was a say something necklace. It's very pretty. Terribly pretty. Terribly pretty. And I'm going to grab, pick up that eight, get in it mm -hmm. to win it, and pull that through. So this is a good time to um, clear off your work table so you have a clear space to work. I remember having fits when I, my husband bought me a new task chair that I was sitting at, and I used to catch the thread on the arm all the time doing this technique. So you want to make sure you have um, a pretty nice, clear area workspace, and, you know, you're uh, well-fed and well-caffeinated and well-slept. Mm -hmm. And you're ready to do it. Right. And, again, you don't need to go in and glue these knots as long as you have the tails there um, showing you where mm -hmm. to glue later. Um, or if you want to glue as you knot, you can do that, too. Yeah. Whatever works for you. Whatever is your usual gluing rhythm. <laughs> works out well. Okay, so the clasp is already on, Em, right? I know, isn't that great? So all you really need to do is complete your fringe. Right. right? I thought I'd make a few extra, few other kinds of fringe. Okay, why don't um, we do that? We've got a few minutes. Yeah, um, and then we're good. We'll, uh, we'll uh, wrap so this I'm gonna up. So I'm going to make a loop fringe. And one of the things you can do with loops is to um, make sure you use one bead as sort of the stem bead, the bead you go back through. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, the loop will can open up and be a big circle rather mm -hmm. than a loop. Does that make sense? I put about five, 10, 10, 13 beads on here. It's a complete random guess, okay? And I'm gonna go through the bead that's right at the base and then through my eight, I'll come out. And this will make give me a little loop of beads. Oh yeah, that's So that pretty. can be in there too and kind of have mm -hmm. some fun with that one, right? And then let me show you how to do a leaf. Tilt a little more towards the camera if you can. I sure, how's that? Yeah. Sorry guys. I'll do, an, I'll do another, okay. well, well no, that shows yeah. up pretty good actually. Let's pick a up bit of a tilt. three, six, nine, ten. I'm going to do ten beads to start with. I'm going to skip a bead and go back through one bead. Now I think I'd like my stem to be about three beads long. Mm -hmm. So that means I, have, I need one, two, three, four, five more beads. So I'll go in on the third bead from the base. I'm tangling, I'm tangling. Mm -hmm. And that'll give me a little leaf shape. Oh yeah, look at that, like a elongated oval. Yeah. So I've got a, a little loop and leaf. I could even do a leaf with a shape at the end. Mm -hmm. Get real fancy. All right, oops. That's when you mix your crimp beads in with your seed beads. Like, what is that bead doing there? And this is actually not uh, going pretty quickly. I mean, I think you mean going you might too wanna, slowly. Yeah, it's going pretty. It's moving pretty, along. Moving along. Good. What I might do, you guys, if you're doing this in spurts, I might work on like your first pass. You know, and then take a. You definitely want to take a break while you're doing this. So take your first pass take a breather, you know, it would be a good three evening product project mm -hmm. if you did all three passes over the course of a, an evening or something as well. So there's a loop fringe with a bead in the middle of it. Oh, real pretty. Look at that. I right? like that. Yeah, fringe is cool. And would you typically, Emily, um, change these up on the first pass, the middle pass, the last pass? You know, what do you think? I think if I was going to incorporate a lot of these loops, I probably would do it on that first pass, would you? only because they're kind of at the same length mm -hmm. that this is happening at, and it just kind of keeps it a little more consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that can happen when you have a lot of things mixed together is it feels a little crazy, mm -hmm. and I often will counsel folks when they come to me for advice about, you know, how do I make this, how do I make these colors all work together? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a matter of 
of having your contrasts be in different places. Mm -hmm. You know, this has a fair amount of contrast and texture, but the beads themselves all are somewhat related. Mm -hmm. So the beads so themselves kind of blend mm -hmm. together. Um, if I was making a necklace, this might be an awful lot of colors to make a strung necklace out mm -hmm. of, you know? And it might not really read very well because it'd be hard to kind of get them all next to one another. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it uh, depends a little bit on the piece and it depends on a little bit on um, your color combo. Mm -hmm. um, working monochromatically is a favorite of mine. Obviously, mm -hmm. I do it a lot. And I always feel that kind of opens me up to have more texture because I have very similar colors together. Right. So and that creates a cohesiveness in and of right. itself. That gives me my contrast yeah. is yeah. the texture, not yeah. the beads themselves. So let's pull, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. before we move the camera back, sure. let's pull some of your samples so we can take a look at them up close. Sure. I'm gonna move your sample over mm -hmm. here. Uh, we did now, have a question about you if, the bugle. Yeah, that's oh, what yeah. I was gonna ask next was about bugle beads. You so, know bugle beads are kind of a problem child. Mm -hmm. They tend to be a little bit rough and scratchy on their yeah. ends. Um, if this was going to be a very delicate bracelet, you could put a bugle in the long, being the long part of the fringe. But it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be as supple. It, no, right? it would not. It would be a little pokier. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be interesting. It's something maybe you might want to try out and see what mm -hmm. happens, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great way to discover new things is yeah. to say what would happen yeah, if. Yeah, and do a tester. Mm -hmm. Why not? And yep. see, yep. you know, it might have kind of an interesting geometric look to it. Mm -hmm. So oh, let me slide this guy you've off got, too. So what you've got here is um, the one that you did with the Christmas beads. These mm -hmm. kind of All those tribal. little stripes and everything. Mm -hmm. They look great. So pretty. And the thing that you want to also make sure of, you guys, when you're stringing a piece like this, and especially if you're using a toggle, Emily built this in into this project um, that we're doing today, but you want to make sure that you don't have a bunch of beads too close up next mm -hmm. to the toggle because it would be hard to get that toggle opened and closed. So having that little bit of a taper at the end makes it easier for you to use that toggle. For sure. Yeah, this And of is course if pretty. you decide to make a boa. Yeah, let's take a look at that boa. So this is something that you used in the monochromatic palette, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I made a beaded beads for yeah, the Yeah, you guys remember the dangles. beaded beads. And then this is just a series of loops at mm -hmm. the bottom. This mm -hmm. was actually, there was actually a base of beads that's looped. Okay. And so then I made a loop on each one. Oh, and great. so it kind of got to be yeah, hedgehoggy. Kind of that's really cool. This has a one, um, one pass has a Swarovski crystal on the end mm -hmm. of each one. So there was about 500 um beads, so it's mm -hmm. about 1,500 shaped beads mm -hmm. in this whole thing. Wow. But I did a lot of different kinds of beads, some pressed glass, some mm -hmm. um, mufflers, those little mm -hmm. rectangles, mm -hmm. some cubes, and, and really played a lot with it. I did a lot of picos. And um, this still has the three passes. Same, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's strung exactly the same. Exactly the same way. Now, I did add in, in here, and you can actually, I can show you right where it's at, secret, secret. Um, I did actually do a couple of double crimps. I see that right there. So I made a little bit of a um, uh, strength thing to move here. Mm -hmm. Knowing that how much weight this, this actually heavy. carries, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to have that extra bit of crimping. So I did a double crimps mm -hmm. um, on both ends. On the ends. Mm -hmm. Great. They look great. Let's show that blue one up close just, mm -hmm. for, just for fun. Yeah, I'm working on an orange and gold one mm -hmm. that's very pretty. And uh, it's taking a while. But I, you know, I like to look for little beads and, and collect them. Um, and this even has some trade beads in it. Mm -hmm. These little snake, interlocking glass snake beads. We have them now in bronze, mm -hmm. right, or brass. Um, I love those brass I love ones. those beads, you mm -hmm. know. Um, lots of little flowers and daggers, um, leaves. Mm -hmm. You know, things that I've, I've kind of collected over the years. Here's a, here's a, roller, a roller bead on a, this is like a, um, a slider bead. It rolls right. over the top. Of your of the strand, of the it strand moves around on there. Movement. Yeah, no, oh, it's great. Yeah, good fun. Well, it pulls I out all your little loose hairs. Yeah, <laughs> I think they all look really, really good. Yeah. Well, I think Brandwin, we can move things back around, and okay. we'll get to signing off. Mm -hmm. Because yet another Facebook Live, fun and fun, has come to an how end. How long? Oh, how long are the boas? Yeah. Let's measure, because I don't really remember. I think they're Do you want the tape measure? pretty long. Where yeah. did I? Oh, the tape measure is somewhere on the floor right there. There it is. There it is.
I'll grab it here. There it is. Oh, twice 24. About 48 inches mm -hmm. long are the boas. <laughs> They're really pretty. Really, really pretty. Yeah. I really like them, and you know they're they're kind of a showpiece. It's something that when I wear them at a bead show, people will come up and ask me questions about them. And Give you the beater's handshake. The beater's handshake. Touch my touch my jewels. Touch and, your jewelry. Uh, That's right. <laughs> That's what we like to call. I can't stop fringing. Let me do this last one. <laughs> I didn't tell you you were gonna like it. <laughs> I know. You know I like fringe. I know. So just in the time that we've been playing together, and again, I am a slow seed beater. You've done a great amount. That's what, awesome. What length have I accomplished? I've maybe done a, a, maybe two inches? a third. Let's see. How long have I gotten there? It's about two inches. Yeah, about more. two inches. So not too bad. No. So, um, and again, it looks like I've got plenty of room here to uh, come in. So I will continue this one down and then turn around and do that second mm -hmm. that second pass. Yeah, so. yeah. Looks great. I love this. I like those temple beads in there a whole too. lot. That's I like a newish a little, bead. Yeah, a little touch of metal mm -hmm. in these I think work really well. And you can see I have not um, cut any of my tails off yet. Yeah, just um, glue them, let them dry, I glued, and, mm -hmm, yep. and then I'll clip later. Great. Yeah. Well, M, we have some Ooh. fun things today, right? Yes. So go ahead and grab those um, our little signs over there. Yeah. And we've got some fun. Um, some fun things for you. Uh, well, I keep taking off my glasses, but I need to actually put them on so I can see. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of things for you today, you guys. Uh, today is the 16th of May, and today's uh, fun little um, little on offer a uh, discount today yep. is all seed beads are 20% off time to stock yeah, time up. to stock up so if you put in seed bead 20 all of the seed beads that includes uh, the soul gel check seed beads as well as the Japanese seed beads all of those guys will be um, will knock off 20% when you put seed bead 20 in your coupon code and then we thought it would be fun to do a little uh, a little giveaway, a little yeah. raffle, right? So we have two raffle prizes. So um, this, our offer, our sale, CB20, ends tonight at midnight on the tonight uh, 516 at midnight Pacific time. But if you order before about 1 p.m. today, and it's about noon Pacific time, so you've got an hour to place your order, if you put in your shipping notes, Emily's back. What Emily did this morning was she chose two color palettes for this project that don't exist anywhere. She you told chose me I could pick out anything, anything I wanted. Two palettes. So we're going to choose two winners. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about the palettes. You I did. chose one blue palette because mm -hmm. blue's really my favorite color. And um, you know, one of the things we have are these mix. Two mixes that we use for the um, for the heart. The right, the, and these are the like pre -mixed. unbreakable heart. Right, so this is like a no brainer. Yeah, you don't you win right away. Mm -hmm. Right, so size eleven mixes comes in there. Some eights, some sixes, mm -hmm. some fire polish, mm -hmm. some um, really uh, pretty millimeter pretty rondelles. five millimeter rondelles, mm -hmm. um, needles and thread, crimp tubes, soft flex, and fire line. Yes. And crimp covers. And yes. I will get a clasp I just forgot. Yeah. Okay. We'll All in a baggie. Look, I'm going to put that Look, clasp right that there. that silver clasp. That's exactly the one I was going to do with it. That's right. And then the second palette. Then, I really, I, these these colors make me crazy. I just love them. These are the soul gels from um, I have so when, many we did, things. when we did the crochet class. And I thought... In the in the scheme of these Christmas beads and that mm -hmm. kind of multicolor, it kind of had that feeling. Kind of had it. that feeling to mm -hmm. it. So I got the navy, the red, the pink, the turquoise, and the brown. Mm -hmm. And then I pulled some black and white, right? Because mm -hmm. that needs a little. Maybe this is the eights are going to be the background, and maybe there's going to be white in there as the shape bead. Mm -hmm. Plus, I can't get all this in this gift bag. You're I know. Have to fix it's, it that's the best. <laughs> Just gonna shove this in there. We'll make it look pretty for you, I promise. Um, I picked out these matte uh, turquoise yeah, melons, the which turquoise I just melons. so pretty. I've tried yeah. to use those several yeah. times, and some some Picasso four millimeter, and um, I love these snaky 
mm -hmm. ones in the blue and those beautiful yeah. coppers. So that's kind of a, a bright kind of s summery kind of spring Christmas mm -hmm. bead kind of palette. And then we've got this crimp palette. Crimp covers yeah. and uh, we'll get you a, um, an antique brass it, glass yeah, clasp, some needles and both kinds of thread yep. in a baggie. In a baggie. It's not going to fit. It's not going to fit, but <laughs> we'll throw the baggie in. You can put your Don't worry. piece in there. You'll get a baggie in so, there. So remember, to be qualified for the drawing, uh, you need to place that order between right now, noon Pacific time, till 1 o'clock Pacific time, okay, since you're watching this live. In the episode notes, Emily's back. I'm going to give that to you. And, of course, today, uh, until midnight tonight, Seed Bead 20 knocks 20% off of all the seed beads. Yeah, this both of these kits are absolutely luscious and mouth-watering piles totally of beads. Totally luscious. And what we'll do is we'll take a little photo of both of these palettes, and yeah. we'll put them in the episode notes. Yep. So you guys, if you wanted to recreate your own, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll find some good, good yep. spots for them. Yep, yep. Thanks, Kate. Thanks for having me back. I'm glad you guys still like me. Emily, we couldn't do <laughs> Facebook Live without Emily. Come on. Of course. It's great to have you back. It's really nice to this be back. This is really fun. I yeah. love I knew this that project. You, I knew you awesome. would. And it's, it's definitely one of those ones that's a little addicting. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, I need I need 10 minutes to work yeah, on my I'm fringe. just going to stitch a little. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's no, very, it's very really cool. cool. And I love these mixes. That palette is making yeah. me crazy. I know, I love it's it. delicious. Those gray, those alabaster. Yeah. That, yeah. That mm. dyed gray alabaster is one of my favorite seed beads yeah. of all time. Delish, delish. Well, Fred, whoops. Oops. I'm going to. Free tip throw Friday. My thing. Free tip Friday. I've got something brewing. You'll mm. see what it is on Friday. <laughs> so will I. Next week, you guys, we're going to play around with some more wire. Um, I've got a Kate Richburg classic coming down the pike. We're going to do some wire wrapping of stone discs. We've got some new stone discs that we're debuting next week. Awesome. I'm going to um, do some antiquing of the wire again. We're going to do some and some polishing on this piece. I think you guys are really, really, really going to dig this project. So that's what we've got going on. Sounds good. Sounds All good. Right. I will be sure to drop in. Well, yeah. I try to. I just no, no, sometimes no. I just don't get for to. Facebook Live next for week. I know. Oh, oh, that's for me. Yeah. I thought it was for. Don't I'll, scare me. I'll try and drop in for Free Tip Friday. Right. So. <laughs> but she'll be here for Facebook Live yeah, next yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Are we doing? Are, are we doing the project? I think we're doing. Probably. Okay. Yeah, awesome. I'll show you. Awesome. Yeah. I haven't done yeah. it in a while, but yeah. awesome. Don't leave me. <laughs> don't leave us. <laughs> awesome. All right, you guys. <laughs> thanks so much. As always, I'll see you on Friday for Free Tip Friday. Thank and you, guys. Next week on Good to see Live. everyone. Talk to Thank you. <laughs> there it is. I know it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's I'm fun doing. To, I'm doing.